The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. So we've talked before about 300 bushel corn and the potential. What do you think is the real ceiling or the or the where we should be thinking? Because I think you're you've mentioned before it's past 300. Yeah, I guess 300 is supposed to be the natural average. So some some growers have to grow more than 300 if the average is going to be 300. I, I put the yield potential of corn somewhere in the 400, 450 to 500 bushel range. So it's pretty clear to me that we're not achieving the full potential of the corn crop. And so why? Well, I think it's stresses, uh, chronic stresses that uh, hit the crop uh, day to day. Th th things like uh, crop management, in some cases fertility, in some cases plant arrangement, and, and then things like uh, insects and diseases and temperatures and competition with other plants. I, th I think it's stress is, uh, is what chips away at the yield potential of the crop. Well, we've got tools, technologies there to deal with some of those stresses, but it's probably not reasonable to assume that we're going to be able to eradicate all of those challenges. Yeah, and I, I think the other thing we'll have to do is ultimately increase the yield potential of the of the crop. I, th I think now mostly we've increased yield by alleviating stresses, or, or better yet, managing those uh, stresses. So, so, so is genetics the key then? Yes, I think so. I think intrinsic yield is a is a big step ultimately. Uh, instead of having a crop have a 500 bushel yield potential, well, we could move it to 600 or 700. And, and I think uh, that, that, that hasn't actually happened yet. Mostly what we've done through uh, genetics and biotechnology is to relieve some of the stress on the plant. Again, we make it resistant to insects. Well, we, we, we make it tolerant to herbicides. So, and and uh, then we, we apply protection chemicals that uh, prevent diseases. So I think in the future what we're going to have to look at is intrinsic yield, where we actually increase the yield potential of the crop, and, and then we'll still have to manage the stress as well. More and more of a focus on things like preventative measures, such as seed treatments, of course, and fungicides. Does that play that, does that enable that intrinsic yield? I think it helps. I, I think, uh, you know, high yield is, uh, is not an accident. You actually have to plan for it, and you, you, have to, you have to think about the stresses that are likely to occur, not necessarily every year, and then, and then um, plan for high yield. And, and uh, you know, things like seed treatments are, are, are exactly that. You, you, you plan for the alleviation of these kind of stresses. Um, like in, our, in our discussion here today, we've, I, that BSF would obviously like to use chemistry in order to alleviate that stress. And, and uh, I think it's uh, best going to be used in combination with genetics. Mm -hmm. is, there an, is there an area of corn agronomy or corn research that you feel has been kind of untapped? I think the, uh, the water use is a big issue. The, uh, and and uh, I, I can't wait to get my hands on crops, on a corn crop that is, uh, has true drought tolerance in it. Because no doubt water is the most limiting factor that affects crop yield. And it's one of the things that uh, you know, prevents me, I think, from managing it to its full potential. So when we actually have crops that use water more efficiently, or, or, or better yet, are, are, are tolerant to droughts, that I think is going to be a big step in, uh, in, in pushing yield to the next level. So we talk about drought tolerance and drought tolerant traits. Uh, how, what, what kind of increase in efficiency are we talking about in some of these initial concepts that are out there? Yeah, I think the, I think the, the whole idea of drought tolerance will come in what's called the generations, you know, the, the first generation and the second generation. And I, I, I think the, uh, the first generation is, is, uh, is really for areas that, uh, that, that experience what, what's known as moderate drought. So they won't necessarily increase the intrinsic yield. And, we heard today that they really have to be part of a, of a system or a package. So, in other words, you're going to have to do other things along with those yeah. in order to get the full value. And I want I, I want the second generation. I want the one that uh, truly has higher photosynthesis and better yield with less water. But you, you had mentioned uh, t today in the, in the panel discussion that you believe that the drought tolerant sort of traits have a fit across the whole corn belt. I do indeed. I, I do indeed because uh, drought is, uh, the water is the single most limiting factor that, that governs and, and lowers our crop yields. And so if, I know that if uh, you could remove water as a limitation, that allows you to, to fully respond to some of your other management factors and, and some of your protection chemicals. But if I'm, get, if I, if I'm in an area where I'm, I'm assured uh, access to water, 
why would I need that that, that tree? Yeah, yeah, I think it I think it harkens back to the fact that uh, rainfall is better than irrigation. Every grow, every grower will know that they'd rather have an inch of rain than an inch of irrigation. So something else comes along with that rain that you can't prevent from with water. And so I, I'd like to see whatever that something else engineered in the crop so that then the a little water goes a longer way. You, you had mentioned uh, today that uh, you've been waiting your whole career for uh, corn yield to become sexy again. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, finally, you know, I, I spent a lot of time uh, uh, trying, to, trying to, pr to produce corn with less inputs. In, in other words, save the grower to prosperity. This, this idea of maximum economic yield. And, you know, we set land aside. And, and, and now with, the, uh, with us truly thinking about population and, and the population actually growing, uh, now, now the focus is on actually more yield and, and, and better yield. So, so uh, it, it's, a, it's a good time to be in agricultural research. I, I finally feel that uh, the reason I went into it, uh, the sort of lo a little bit of altruism, is, is actually coming to bear. So, do you think this this movement of yield being sexy is has got a, some holding power? It's going to be here for a while. I hope it is going to be here for a while. I think it's partly driven by uh, commodity prices. But uh, there, isn't, uh, there isn't any more land, so we have to get the most out of the land, and, and we can't ruin that land while we're doing it. And so this, uh, this means that we have to use a, a whole host of technologies, and we actually have to think about whether these things are, are sustainable. And, and so today's discussion around sustainability was, was uh, I, I think, timely.